Hello and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have Kane versus Fiddlesticks in the gold slash platinum for MMR range. So more high gold than our previous ones which have really been focusing more on the lower MMR range of gold or the mid MMR range. So let's go ahead and have a look to see what happens. Let's see who carries, what's going on. We have a mid lane Talia. Fascinating considering she's also a jungler. No one plays her in the jungle. As I always say, and I quote right on this, when she's the most popular champion in the game, sorry, <laughs> when she's the most broken champion in the game, people still won't play her. So she's the least popular champion in the game. One of those. Really interesting, actually, because she has gone through periods being so broken in the jungle, and I couldn't get people to pick her up. Really fascinating. Middle six, on the other hand, is an eternal presence. Great one-trick minds will always go sucky sucky. Kane, on the other hand, also doing his raptors into his red, into his krugs. Not a fan of this overall arc because, you know... <laughs> Well, it's just a little slow on the cross, you know, like 231, I 232 cross, we're behind the fiddle, it's okay, but I'm much more a fan of the Raptors, Krugs, Red Float for those kind of clears, just for better sequencing optimization, even if, you know, maybe we're looking to do a red side into a gank, it's not going to happen. You're not going to red side gank a hybrid in your lane unless you want to dive it. I don't think we necessarily want to do that at all. Kane is now sequencing down to the uh, Wolves, he doesn't do the Wolf into the blue kind of... Uh, trick we can actually pull the walls down and still cue the wall on the blue to get the kill that is still possible You just can't do it from as high HP as you could and see this is interesting for me because now we're talking about We're talking about the jungle clears and the awareness and then now we look at this and you're thinking hmm You know if I was a Hecarim a Warwick any sort of other jungler I would rotate to this That's the kind of stuff we talk a lot about in the jungle courses for gold, but mostly we talk about jungle denial. So when people think and hear me say jungle denial, they think, hey, Vrakaya, you're talking about keep this guy suppressed. Well, yes. Yes. How do we do that with our champion? That's the whole goal, right, of all jungling. But you've got to include the lanes in that, in, in that facility because now we have the cane doing this. Dead center. Little Six is doing his red. He's doing his blue. Doing his red. Doing his blue. He finishes the red. He goes to the Krugs. Will it reset? Hopefully not. It doesn't. He finishes... What's going on down here? Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Y Kane could have rotated down sooner and made something happen. Fiddlesticks could have rotated down sooner and made something happen. That information in FK... And you're, now you're thinking, but he's Fiddlesticks. Should Fiddlesticks really cut his clear short to do such things? Yes. Why wouldn't you? It only it makes it makes zero sense to not do it, right? Because if you can do that, the idea of doing that is, hey, I expect the cane to rotate down here. Let me kill them, shove it, save my ADCs. If Kane shows up, and we've seen this in coaching video on this channel, if Kane shows up, we fear him, we silence him, we kill him, and even if he gets to one of our bottom laners, we still kill him. We get a free scuttle crab. We'll back to the right side very, very easily, and, uh, you know, he'll take this, and that's fine, because we'll reset and contest if he wants to invade our tier 2 Grump. You follow? So the jungle denial concept works just as well when you're talking about just rotating to ganks and things like that. That's an effigy. So now the Kane wards this, because obviously he knows where the Fiddlesticks is. From the Fiddlesticks' POV, 99.9% of the Kane has done this. I would expect at this point the Kane most likely to be... Yeah, you know, shooing on over to the other scuttle to control that. Maybe get some wards over here. And obviously, he just used his ward, but he could use his ward over here as well for the second sequence. We're watching the mid lane. Maybe that's a gank. But we know that he most likely showed up here because we had Vision. So we go ahead and take a look and we see, oh, there's a fight. Now, the center was going back to the lane because, of course, she already died and came out of base with her boots. So she can stay here and rotate with us. Mid laners kill each other. Well, yes. Yeah, they kill each other. <laughs> and, uh, whoa, the root actually goes through there. We won't be able to kill the cane. He gets juicy orbs and now we just fight the Brad. We go doot, 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 doot. We'll have suck up in a second. Oh, we flash into the Brad cube. It doesn't really matter. Sucky, sucky, hill. What goes on in these situations? What goes on through jungler's minds? I don't know. All I can tell you is that when you see low HP laners that you should rotate to and handle, please rotate to them and handle it. Your camps will be there afterwards. You're also taking away what you expect the enemy jungler to do. I expect a cane or whatever to rotate and clean this up. Let me get there before them because they're gold. They're not going to rotate. They're going to finish that clear first, but I won't. So I get the benefit, right? You are obviously going to give up certain things as we have roaming top laners when it comes to uh oh it's actually not a top laner it's the uh cane moving on down to track the tier to grump obviously not the most intelligent um move considering you know that the 
Fiddlesticks is coming to the top side here. That's my mistake. Talking to you in the camera, not paying attention to back timers and death timers from the hybriding. Apologies to you. But of course not, because we did Raptors into the Krugs, right? Our sequencing is a little off, but it doesn't have to be. Like, there's no reason for him to do this into this when you know that the Fiddlesticks is going to be coming out of, like this with Salt Boots, right? Which, of course, helps us farm as well and, of course, does more damage to well, basically anything with Magic Resist. And all we would know from the cane there, obviously, as you can see, finishing the Krugs before going back to base, is that as soon as you see this, you press the tab, you see no atomization, you know the Scuttle's gone, you know he took his Raptors because that's plus eight over the last time we saw him. He's going to fall back to the, the Krugs, most likely, to finish the Quadrant and then reset, right? Then he'll spend his Cash Money Gold and come down to the bottom side. We will be sequencing thusly down to the bottom side. We're about just shy of level six here and getting ultimate. A bottom lane is pushed in, but is the roaming issue here. We have the Ari hitting level six, Tali hitting level six. We want to kind of use our E so she can't dash on it, but uh, she already did use that and waste it. And of course now the reworked Q from last year, super useful in these situations, giving you that boulder that slows as well. And now the fiddle six, obviously, excuse me, talking about the mid laners. I mean, goodness gracious me. Is this a jungle coaching video or what is it? We finish off the Krugs, we know the Kane's coming down to the bottom side, but because he's most likely a gold jungler, is he going to come down to the bottom side first, or go to his camps first? Most likely, I would anticipate either he's going to his camps first, or he's going to the dragon first. Uh, but because we show, we're going to draw his attention, exactly right, we're going to draw his attention to the bottom lane. And so you can see from the Fiddlesticks' perspective, hey, let me try get some tempo control by ganking this quickly, running at them. I mean, we're not level 6, which is a bit of the, which is a bit of the issue. Main issue. And the cane we know is going to be coming down from this side because, again, we should have kind of added up together, right? What's the cane doing? Why is he up here again? Even if he did go back to base after being chunked here, right, and we don't see anything, as soon as we know the cane's doing this because this guy dies or goes back to base, he's doing this and coming down. So regardless of whether he's doing this and cutting in and rotating or coming out of base and going direct, you know he's headed in this direction. So when you go for this gank, You've got to be assessing and calculating where, where is this enemy jungler going to be showing up as a fiddlesticks. You've got to think about that because you know the counter gank is coming. So if you can burn sums, if you can chunk them and force the lane to be compromised, then pull back. Don't over chase too many waves. You know the cane's coming. The alarm bells have to go off. And you know credit to the cane for doing what he didn't do in the first rotation, which is rotate reactively prior to the action, right? I see something with an 80% opportunity for success and he chooses to um, realize that success. But now, unfortunately, you know... Let's see what he does here. The Ezreal apparently wants to die, so the Kane sh tried to anticipate the Arcane Shift, but misjudged the range of the Arcane Shift. So a bit unlucky there, but again, the Ezreal was making his life a little bit difficult. Now the Kane can fall back to this side. We know the Fiddlesticks will go up to the blue. The uh, Jax has died again to the Heimerdinger. We need six as soon as possible so we can use this sucker. So what you're noticing quite heavily in these particular scenarios, obviously, is... <sighs> If you miss a couple beautiful ganks with low HP laners, if you miss the opportunity to get a bit of tempo in terms of pressure ahead of the enemy jungler, in this elo, the coin drop of your lanes just isn't worth it, right? It's not worth letting your laners kind of deal with themselves. And now you're kind of forced into more desperate measures to try to get our first real kill here. The center's going to shop. Obviously, this guy will die 100%. She takes a kill, which sucks, but, you know, that's okay. We know now that the cane, most likely, because he comes down here, will sequence upside fully. And uh, we've taken all of this, so we, we know that's gone, right? So, from a tracking perspective, again, we know cane's coming up. We currently have two people on the top lane. Going to shove that. The Tilia moves in here. We'll be able to snack this, please. Do not take that. Thank you so much. The Herald is spawning. Can we use this prio to take this Herald? This would be something I would actually kind of force a little bit, just because Jax is whacking that thing with his light post. Ari is here with the Atelier who, go, who goes back to base. We know the Kane again now is sequencing up because the sequencing has swapped. And look, she's doing this by herself. Like we could just be doing this Herald right now for absolute free, right? Vard rotates to the mid lane to kill the Atelier, but we're on it, we're on it, we're on it. The, the Senna is just doing it by herself, right? She's just doing it solid because the Kane is low HP. That's why clearing and understanding your champion is important. So that's a lost herald. And that's the biggest thing that affects gold MMR plays, is they miss these little moments to secure an objective. They get a shutdown to get a kill. Now we flash in here again. Is it worth... Oh, uh, the center hits another clutch W. They finish us to bottom lane here. We will have Sucky, Sucky, Sucky are ready to go. What would be enough? No, because they already drags the magical orbs of doom and despair. And, and we everybody dies. Overchasing. Once... 
twice and maybe thrice when we pushed the wave. We're just overchasing gold cash money. You know, I wish these didn't show up as fiddlesticks is on the map. That's that's new, right? That feels like it's new. I'm pretty sure after all these years of watching Fiddle and Koshi Fiddle, I don't remember seeing them as fiddlesticks icons on the map. So I, I don't like that. Because <laughs> now it's trolling me, the replay. I mean, I know he's dead, right? I know he's coming out of base, but I mean, it's like the it's like the Nico, right? You can't tell. And, and, and a replay, I want clarity. Anyway, so we know obviously he's dead. We know it's not him, but you can in understand the... the instinctive reflex the center now is rotating and roaming and just leaving the bottom lane to die um we've all had those adcs we can we can understand that the tilly now will ult and will try and kill a heimerdinger uh, he flashes the w e combo from the talia which is you know nice reactions but you most likely will die the viceroy was patient and he did in fact die but we've missed the herald which means now that kane can take the dragon and you're following right these little misses cost us very visceral leads that we can use to win other lanes, to push maps, to win games. And I know it's controversial, but now we're losing this as well. We've been pushed out of everything. There's no real reason for that. We've been pushed out of everything, okay? I would always anticipate, because I'm paranoid, that if they take my dragon and my whole red side is up, that they're going to it afterwards. And if they don't, I'm just ple pleasantly surprised. And if they are, at least I'm ready in my mind to take the fight, but that's fine here as well. Uh, the Phyllis is going 3,000 years under turret. Like, we see this now. We have no ult available, but does it matter? No, but we don't have any flash. Ah, uh, he will lifesteal. We're going to have the shadowing, potentially, of the cane. Got to keep that ready to go, but uh, I don't think the cane will show up here. Exhaust, why? Ah, uh, he does! He does! Look at him! I'm so happy! I'm happy for this cane. You know, even if he dies, I'm happy that this was in his mind, right? I'm happy that this wasn't like, I'm not happy about the death. The death is stupid. We all agree on this. But I'm happy that he saw the fiddlesticks here, got shoved out, sees the fiddles go here, extrapolates that the fiddles coming, and shadows. Now, when the fiddles dies, right? Okay. Fine, cool. Pull the plug. You know everyone's coming back out of base. Don't overstand, fight the fiddlesticks, leave. Just go do your sequencing. That's great. But I'm happy to see that progress. That's why people always laugh a little bit and they say, why are you happy when they rotate to a scenario they shouldn't have died? Well, it's like, well, I'm happy that he thought about it versus just doing his camps blindly like every other, you know, gold one and below jungle will do. And you know, they miss so much on the map. So I like that he looked up, extrapolated, did something about it. His execution was terrible and he should have backed out, but that's okay. We've seen the fiddlesticks do this multiple times, including at this very moment. Um... Oh, you know, over chasing, committed to dangerous zones. Now the Kane is going to come out of base as well. Ari has prior. We will just burn them down, burn them down. This champion is really great for covering mistakes uh, because you put yourself in a bad position. Then you ult you're walking out an Ari here. She just straight up goes over the wall. She will get that uh, snack onto the Jax. And again, Senna's just rotating around with the Talia. So a good, messy gold game. And the, the, the Fiddle has done a good job. He's 2 to 6. Solid stuff. But the. Missed rotation early, the missed herald potentially. Those things are niggling at me, and I think if you do that enough games in a row, make those mistakes, a better jungler, not like this Kane is just basically face planting himself, will exploit you and will use those leads against you. So those are the kinds of things we always want to keep in mind. Obviously, I'm, I'm covering it a bit superficially uh, at this particular stage because you know we we this game is limited a little bit in terms of what we can lose. That's why for videos courses and all that stuff right i have to go find like the right games that show us as much as stuff as possible for the coaching channel i like to keep this real if you know what i mean like the other channels can be your your ferraris and, and lamborghinis but that's great but what do regular people buy what happens in regular people's lives this channel right this is the stuff that we all tackle every day so it's nice to kind of have that the different spread. But hopefully you understand what I mean. Because now normally I would jump. Can we snack it, baby? No. Would, we would normally jump to a different example to showcase what happens when, you know, a good jungle is against you and you make these mistakes. But how can we, if we make these mistakes, still end up being useful to our team? I think that's the most important thing. And that ha is what's happening in this game to the Fiddlesticks as we move on down. It's a bit more of a verbal lesson, I guess. But we do see the Kane go to the top side here. He now sequences down. Um... Ari is uh, apparently just being shilling in our jungle here. We're going to flash to get out. That's fine. Always ward up your jungle camps. But I mean, this happens. This is absolutely normal stuff. The center's really her roams while griefing for the for the Ezreal. And you can understand his 
uh, maybe dismay at this particular thing. She's at least really impacted the map by creating numbers advantages. He Ooh, that's greedy. We didn't want to do that. And now the Kane's going to shove me a flash. Hit his W. He's going to hold deep inside the fiddle sticks and then extract himself. Q back in for the slice and dies. Auto attack for the passive proc onto the center. The center will hit the W. Auto attack. We'll auto attack one more time. She will have Q shortly. It doesn't matter. She Q autos him and he dies. Gets a double buff. So now she can smack this turret. Jack shows up. This guy's like, I'm going to split push with this Herald, which is, of course, what you do. This guy still hasn't taken this turret. Ezreal's going to show up to the top side here. You know, the center's rums. And again, I'm, I know this because. You all know I have like 1.6 million in Zyra at this point, you know, half jungle, half support. Bit of mid, actually. Bit of mid from Season 7 and Season 6. I also play Senna, right? And when my ADC is a very not good player, or trolling, or griefing, or, or whatever the hell, and the lane's just doomed, you can have really strong map, map impact if you play around your jungler. Now, the jungler has to know how to play around you as well, but I do still like the idea of... A bit, maybe I wouldn't do it this much if I was the center necessarily. A little bit grief free ADC. But looking for those roams to make impact around your jungler, get yourself fed, get your jungler fed, help your mid laner, create those numbers advantages. You can do a lot of good. So don't do that, obviously. And then we get interrupted here. Now we get chomped. You know, the dragon is gone. The dragon is gone. Ezreal is top. We're not in position to fight this. Just accept it and give it up. Biggest thing again in gold. That's actually anything more so in below. You gotta accept things. When they're gone, they're gone. End of story, right? Look, we have no vision. Don't know where anybody is. They could see us. They could trap us. Let's just push us out a little bit. Let's just make sure we control our camps. Let's do a full sequence. Let's ward this up. Let's ward this up. We're going to have that second Herald spawning uh, at some particular point. Well, in a regular game, you will have the second Herald spawning because we would have taken the first one and there wouldn't only be, you know, one. Or, or like one spawning at 19 minutes, you know, things like this. So if you take the early Herald at eight minutes, you... 10 minutes, you know, one would be spawning now, so that's the thing you would kind of float back to, right? You have the dragon, you can fall back to that, you take all your camps, you've got this up while they all reset, you sneak this away. It's typically how the timing would work, so that's where my mind uh, goes directly, but obviously in this game, not currently the available thing on the map, although Ezreal's soul is apparently available. Tough game to play when your ADC is, is dismissed. But also, again, I, you cannot undersell, even if someone's a griefer and a troller, and they're not having a good time. If you can impact that level three trade, you know, it could change the nature of the lane. Guy keeps his mental, things like this. Now our bot lane over, uh, sorry, bot lane, our team overcommit entirely when we know everyone's there. And the only thing I would say here, the Fiddlesticks is guilty of at this particular stage is, is kind of detaching a little bit versus shadowing a little bit more. And you gotta be very direct with your communication. Hey guys, they're all here. Back off, leave away. And if they're not going to do that and you see the enemy team going to collapse, set the trap and make the pick when everyone's alive. Don't go in once everyone's dead. I think those are really, really big things to keep in mind, right? Because if you detach from your team, even if they keep going and it's a 3v3, and you know you can alter this, you don't shadow the other direction, you can just shadow run. You can just keep yourself ready to alt in when they engage on your team. And that might actually win you that 3v3. And if that's the case, cool. Now, should they overcommit? Should they push beyond vision line? If you want to leave, should they? Should... No, of course not. But you've got to play around what is, not what it should be. End of story. So that's a big, big gold swing. And now we're down to 8k. The Heimerding is definitely running away with this. The Fiddlesticks has done solidly this game. But I think if you're 2-5-10 in this game and you look back on it, you're like, okay, look, I missed a Herald. I overchased and died here. I overchased and died here. I missed a rotation here. This was okay. What would have happened if all of those things went our way? If we made all of those decisions? I honestly think you have a lot more control over this game, but this game is definitely going to be one of those difficult ones. This is not like a free 60%. If you did those things, you win. This is definitely a, how do I think about the enemy jungler? How do I keep getting myself as strong as possible? Now, the Heimer doing a top side here is going to be shoving. The Bard shows up with pressure points. You know, and it can always sound... It can always sound when you do VODs like this, especially in, in these kinds of scenarios, like, oh, look, obviously he's here. Well, that's good for the Kane, right? Like, he's showcasing up here. Now we're shadowing this. We know the Kane's going to show up. The Bard is, is fighting. The Heimerding is dead. We've got a fed Santa. we got a, you know, a decent chance of scaling here. The Bard all goes through. The Kane is now being pushed away. The Santa keeps going. She gets stunned. Uh, now the Tilly's going to be rotating. Obviously, you have to factor in the Ari and the Felios. When you're sort of overchasing here, can we get a kill? There's a Kane. We're going to ult, and we hit no one. So mechanically, right, mechanically, now we don't get the fear, we, like, it's just wasted, you know? So he split his own decision-making there, right? Like, he compromised himself. We do have Zhonya's, but Ari's gonna show up here and he's just gonna E away, piss off. Yeah, 
Yeah, so this is just mechanical tilt. <laughs> wait, wait, okay. So we toned that nicely, but you see what I'm saying. At the end of the day, you gotta make the right decision. And when you make the right decision, and you mechanically mess it up and you lose it, you can deal with it because it's like, oh, look, my mechanics there, I fluffed it, I can, you know, I can fix it over time. If you make the wrong decision and you make the wrong mechanical play, it looks very much like this. You know, you might get something back, but it doesn't look very pretty, so. Good decisions can become undone by bad mechanical plays, and good mechanical plays can cover up bad decisions, no doubt. But as soon as you mess that up, right, it's, it's, it's all doomed. Jax is now taking our Krugs. We're in a bit of a negative game state, so what do we do here to kind of keep ourselves active? And this is something I like to talk a lot about, but at the end of the day, the, the whole pretense is how, do, instead of being 3, 6, 10, do I make myself be, you know, 10, 2, 10? Or at the very least, right? With a Herald with two, three dragons. So that when this time of the game shows up, I'm not watching this happen. I'm strong. And I'm able to control fights entirely. The thing is, it's Shadow Assassin Kane. So it is tough without Zonia's being up. Um, you know, Ezreal very clearly is not in this game. But no one really helped him and he got ditched a little bit. So if you're going to have someone do that, that's fine. But you really got to snowball one of these other lanes. And we just didn't do that. And again, I think the overchasing... It's really what compromised us. Although this cane really confuses me. Right? Anyone else confused by this cane? I'm confused by this cane. Somehow he gets 854, but the jungling early again did not think about jungle denial, did not think about controlling the fiddle sticks, did not really think about much of anything. You know, he tried to trap the fiddle here. Sun is out of base already. Bard is gonna show up at straight up 2v2. Mid laners kill each other. Goes here and does this, checks out this Gromp 2. No real reason. He could have just kept his full sequencing nice and swish and fresh, like boom, boom, boom. Go back to base, you know, or like at very least like this. Go back to base and get ahead of the fiddle. The fiddle over chased you, which gave the cane the ability to react and shut him down. Um, that's more the fiddle giving the cane something for free rather than the cane owning it through a good decision. Which is what we like to talk about all the time. Always. Good decisions leading to good plays, leading to good Ws. And if an enemy jungler gives us a freebie when we're not playing well, hey, we'll take it, we'll take the win, but we've got to understand what could we have done to make this play possible even if the enemy jungler didn't give us that freebie. You follow? So now, look, we're talking like this because this game is really much in stall mode, right? We're just chilling, farming our camps, trying to help the Ezreal mentally figure out how to, you know, breathe in and out. And uh, our team are just out of position. They have Baron. It's really, really tough. Our ults have really been missing. Nice WE from the uh, Talia there. We don't, you know, the ults have been missing. The, let's just say it bluntly, you know, the center's done a solid job at least being relevant in this game, and we've tried our best to as well, but their comp is a little bit tough for Fiddle sometimes to face. We need to maximize that angle in that ult. If you're missing this, these angles and these ults, like here, like we're just whiffing this, we're wasting it here, we don't kill anyone. So many ults just not used. And as I know that this is a good Fiddlesticks player, right, all that says to me is I'm tilted, I didn't get as fed as possible, maybe I'm on a bad run. I'm, I'm mentally compromised on my champion. Right, so you're forcing decisions, you're forcing fights, you're getting desperate. And if that's the case, VOD review, like this yourself, ask your questions all the time, look around the map, what did I miss? What could I have done better? Because this guy's just ending the game, right? He's just split pushing the Jax, 790, he's trying to do stuff, but... We didn't snowball a lane, so I think the best thing, the best advice I would give to someone in this particular situation... <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. The best thing I would do in this situation regarding advice to someone in this position is as follows. The next game you play, you will do your regular strategy, your straight up game plan, but you're going to pick a lane to absolutely abuse. And you're going to pick the lane in loading screen. Who will I gank at level six? End of story. You've got to know who you're going for at level six. This is what Agurin did so damn well when we first... Reduced spawn timers from 2.30 to 2 minutes in Season 10, patch 10.4. I made a talk about it clear. Ogruin was like one of the first people to do this clear in the wild. Um, it just it organically, through his own volition. You know, where you kind of do the, as I referenced earlier, the raptors, the krugs, the red, into the wolves, the grump, the blue. You do a scuttle, you gank a lane, you do a scuttle. You know, you re-loop it, or you go back to base, you loop it again, or you loop down, doesn't matter. But you get an early level 6, right? Back then we would get an early level 6 because spawn timers were 2 minutes, not 2 minutes 15. So everything came up 15 minutes sooner. And he would, as soon as he got six, even if it meant, as we watch the closing moments here, even if, you know, he was on a sequence, if he did the Krugs here and got six, 
and he know and he knew in his mind, I want to gank bot lane level six, he would cut out and go and do it. Right? He would not keep sequencing blindly, he would not go mid lane. He knew I wanted to all bottle lane, and so he would go all bottle lane with the Shivana, strong at the time. And that's a big thing, right? The fiddle, sequence down, not yet level six, compromise obviously different meta, different game. Woof, the Senna, you know? There we go. See, we're, like, we can do stuff. You know, we can we can get back in this game through a bit of patience and farming, but it's going to be really, really tough. And obviously, the Shadow Assassin will be able to go in and out, get freebies. It really sucks that that champion allows people to cover up those mistakes, but it allows us to cover up mistakes as well. A lot of good champions do. He was level 5 and kind of ran at them. And I was like, oh, he's tracking the Kane. Kane's coming down. No, he wasn't. He's overcommitted. What could we have done instead if this is not a good gank? I mean, if you just want to go in here, chunk, push, get 6, great. But this is not our main gank, right? Because we die at level 5 there, it entirely compromises our... <laughs> it entirely compromises our level 6 spike, like our primary gank that we want to actually use to go ahead and snowball the game. Like that first 6 ult is going to be on time, it's going to be powerful, it's going to be in the right lane. You've got to know which lane you want to use it on. So. Have your full sequence, track the enemy jungler, look to deny, don't face check zones in a losing game. This is obviously a big no-no, you know that dragon's gone. Try and use that 6, ideally bottle mine, to get a dragon. If you have to give up a dragon, swap over, take a herald. Look for that counter jungling as well. Focus on that jungle denial. Just track the jungler, anticipate what the jungler's gonna do, and know where your first gank is gonna be at level 6. That's what I would do, right? Straight up full clear, with the intent of full clearing, taking some scuttles, and maybe one gank pre-6. Get 6. I know which lane I'm going to use it on, and obviously, while I'm doing that, passively farming, because you should not be thinking about your farming, I'm thinking deeply about the enemy jungler location, what they want to accomplish, and fusing those two things together organically. Now, it sounds like a lot, but it isn't really. It isn't. You go play a normal game and do what I said here, you'll understand, oh, okay, look, I, and I've, I've simplified it. When you start to think about too many things, and you get tilted... This is the sort of shit that happens, so definitely more of a verbal lesson than we would normally have on this channel, but hopefully a little bit of mental motivation and, and sort of just concepts, general concepts that you can think about no matter what uh, champion or whatever style you're playing, but thank you very much for watching. Don't forget the gold course is uh, way more specific than this. Covers absolutely everything from early mid to late game. Uh, this is quite generalistic, obviously, but uh, that will be linked below if you want to find them really, really juicy fast, and as always, I will see you all in the next one.